Okay. Uh, before we start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Rati Nurani, and I'm a teaching staff at Faculty of Psychology, Universitas Erlangga. And it is my pleasure to be a moderator for this public lecture. And first of all, I would like to welcome our distinguished guest lecturer, Dr. Anna Levina from Lomosonov Moscow State University of Russia. Hello, Dr. Anna. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to Universitas Erlangga, especially in Faculty of Psychology. And welcome to UNER, ma'am. We are so honored and so excited to have you here. And I hope you have a good time, even though it is only a virtual class. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, well, everyone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everyone. Welcome to the public course, Universitas Erlangga 2021, with video conferencing and live streaming on YouTube account, uh, Faculty of Psychology, Universitas Erlangga. And also here, uh, already joining our meeting today, uh, the Vice Dean of Faculty of Psychology, Universitas Erlangga. Mrs. Endang Retno Suryaningro. And okay, the topic of this guest lecture is about project management. And it consists of two sessions. The first is the presentation that will be delivered by Dr. Anna about 70 to 75 minutes. And then will be followed by a discussion or a Q&A session about 30 minutes. And beforehand, may I briefly introduce to you all our guest lecturer, Dr. Anna Bina, PhD, is Senior Scientific Officer at Faculty of Psychology, Lomoson of Moscow State University of Russia. Also become an Executive Council member of European Federation of Psychologists Association, Belgium. And recently, she became a project manager of INEX Partners in Moscow, Russia. She graduated with master's degree in educational psychology from Yaroslav Demidov State University and also got her PhD in the area of industrial organizational psychology from the same university. And Dr. Anna has so many other experiences in project management. She organized various events, including international collaborative projects, manage international educational projects, workshops, conferences, and doing work group management for lecturers, teachers, and students. And recently, Dr. Anna involved in managing projects for certified design application by Regional Government of Russian Federation. And some of her significant publications include ways to enhance the effectiveness of online education uh, and Russian teachers' perception of kindness and its manifestation in educational activities. So yeah, we are arriving at the main session. And in this occasion, we shall have an outstanding presentation from our prominent speaker, whom I believe shall enrich our insights and knowledge regarding the theme of this class. Here we go, Dr. Anna Laibina, time is yours. Thank you very much, Rati. And um, uh, Thanks so much for joining this session. I will try to uh, provide uh, the extracts uh, of project management within the allowed 70, 75 minutes, and we'll try to practice a little bit if we have time. So uh, this is uh, the content of my presentation today. So definitely what is project or what is a project? What is project management? Uh, project knowledge areas and processes, uh, project life cycle, project management methodology, the new reality of project management, skills required for project managers, and uh, Q&A session as it has been announced. So like the very basics. And uh, I will try to um, link this presentation to the current project um, working on for Russian government so that you will have some practical taste and examples. Um, so uh, what is a project? Uh, there is um, 
a very important source of information about that, which is uh, called the Vacronin PM Bok, but basically it is um, uh, translated as project management body of knowledge. So basically, if you have seen uh, yourself as a project manager in the future and planning to develop your skills in this area, uh, definitely you should um, Google for it and maybe purchase the recent edition uh, to learn more about what knowledge uh, about project management has been gathered around the world uh, in order to um, make all projects a success. So uh, these uh, project management body of knowledge, PM Bach defines a project as a temporary endeavor um, undertaken to create uh, a unique product, service, a service or result. So basically the three uh, main components for the project uh, is uh, projects uh, identified by their temporary characteristics. Uh, so these uh, time for project may last from a few days to a few years, but anyway, we understand that the key issue is that the project is uh, going to stop at some point once it will hopefully achieve its main goal. Uh, secondly, it will be a unique result. So we're not just taking something uh, which is already there and replicate, uh, replicating that in the new settings or in similar settings. And another aspect is uh, progressive elaboration. What does it mean? It means that once we start uh, developing the project, uh, there are new issues, new matters uh, popping up and um, well, we shall consider them. And also many projects that are taken on step by step. So once you make one step, uh, you look around, you see if you are on the right track if everything goes all right, and then you proceed with the next step. And in the next step, you're again uh, looking for whether everything goes okay or uh, everything is all right. Uh, there should be additional components involved or not. And then you take the third step and so on till you finish uh, with the project. And uh, there are different types of projects. So definitely uh, um, you may uh, work on individual projects, but then for example, you are uh, creating or writing, working on your thesis, um, or there might be an educational project, but then a group of few students have to come up together to create a, a paper, a prototype for, for a certain service or whatever. So uh, most of you have actually uh, tried uh, some individual projects in some way in your, uh, in your life, that's for sure. So um, other types of projects, for example, which I personally participated in uh, was, for example, events uh, management. Um, and uh, recently we organized European Congress of Psychology. I was a head project manager there. Um, uh, responsible for everything, um, like starting from thesis submission, ending up with uh, purchasing meals for participants, uh, opening ceremony, etc. So, uh, basically, to ensure that the event uh, is a success. And thanks so much for our colleagues from Indonesia who supported us with promo and visiting uh, visiting our country. Like we had 91 participants, uh, 91 countries participating, and I guess Indonesia was in top 10 according to attendance. Again, thanks so much. So, and another project uh, which Rati has already mentioned is uh, the set of like service design projects. For example, huge collaborative projects uh, uh, which may uh, contribute to public service, let's say to make um, life of uh, wide population better, to improve their lifestyle and so on and so forth. So which includes numerous bodies, numerous stakeholders, numerous interests, uh, and uh, definitely lots of management to figure out how to make it all work well and first how to create what will work further. So uh, now uh, what I would like you to do is to actually um, think of the um, think of the uh, your experience with project. Uh, what I 
suggest you go to the site menti.com uh, and uh, enter the uh, voting number 8240-0741 um, to indicate your experience with the project. So, um, so I will also be able to understand uh, whom do we have here in, um, in this audience. So it is menti.com 82400741. Excuse me, Dr. Anna, can you repeat the code, please? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so just give me a second. Um, it is um, zero two, oh, sorry, uh, A24, I will better, um, I would rather, let me see, I would rather share my screen again so that you can see that. Yeah, that would be easy. Okay, everyone can go to menti.com and the yeah. code is 82400741. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so there is only one question there. So um, where you have to answer the question, how experienced are you in this project, in, in projects? Okay, A2400741. I will stop sharing my screen just to demonstrate the results. Okay. So what do we have here? So wonderful. Uh, we have uh, so far zero participants that never participated in the project. There is one person who participated in an individual project. You're very welcome. Hope Hopefully this lecture will be helpful for you. And uh, most of the participants participated in the group projects. That's wonderful. Uh, we have 11 um, so far participants who've been, oops, sorry for typo, a part of an organizing team for complex projects. And um, there are two people who've been a complex project head. Wonderful. So normal deviation, more or less, we have here. Thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that. I will stop share my screen and switch on to presentation, but you uh, may keep voting. So this will, information will be also very helpful for us to understand the, um, uh, the audience. Um, so, Uh, moving along, I will tell you more about the project I'm currently involved in. So it is called Educational Expedition and it takes part in the um, Kurgan region. It is marked in blue down there uh, uh, in the screen. So uh, basically I was a project manager there uh, to deal with a rather sensitive issue. Uh, so uh, public health, not related to coronavirus. So um, what has been found is that uh, during recent years, uh, deaths increased because of several, um, uh, several diseases. Well, oncological issues, uh, cardiovascular issues, um, issues with digestion system and issues with respiration. So, as you see, such a tremendous growth in uh, illness and death uh, 
caused lots of awareness about how to deal with that. So basically, that's the project uh, which serve uh, to complete the task um, to increase attractiveness of checkup services. So why checkup services? Because uh, there is um, in Kurgan region, uh, many uh, citizens, they came for help only on the later stages uh, of their diseases or when it was uh, pretty late to treat that. Uh, and uh, the only way to prevent that was to, uh, through uh, regular screening, uh, checkup, health screening. And uh, it was important to make these checkups attractive for people. Uh, in Russia, they are free of charge, uh, but people for some reason didn't use them. So the task was to do something about that. So to ensure that uh, most of the people will use that service so that predispositions for certain disease uh, will be um, identified at early stages with possible treatments so to prevent deaths. Uh, later, then I will refer to uh, this Kurgan case, you will see the, uh, the picture on the right hand side. So uh, that would be the example from Kurgan project. So, um, we should also identify uh, uh, or differentiate, I would rather say, projects uh, from operational activities. So there are differences between them. Uh, projects always develop uh, new areas or somehow new areas, uh, while operational activities, they are created uh, to sustain, um, sustain normal activity or operation. Uh, projects are always temporary, so there is a starting point and there is an end point, point while for operational activities they are continuous. And uh, for projects, uh, they are rather unique, even though they may be implemented in new settings, uh, but anyway, there are unique circumstances. Uh, while operational activities are repetitive, when we uh, provide certain service uh, in a repetitive way and it is uh, rather similar. So I described that in a very brief form, but I hope you grasp the, uh, the essence of the difference between project and operational activities. And uh, now I would uh, suggest you to uh, go for a quick test for understanding. So please use the same link uh, provided uh, in the chat by Ratti. Um, so again, menti.com, A240741. There is a short quiz to figure out the uh, understanding of the difference between projects and operational activities. I will switch off my uh, screen in order to proceed with the, with the uh, question. You will be given um, one minute uh, to uh, um, to basically answer. Okay, everyone can go to menti.com. So, okay. So I guess we are ready with the results and they can share them. So most of you correctly guessed the uh, uh, differentiated projects from uh, 
operational activities. So creation of the new counseling center is definitely a project. So then you create it and um, start working on um, launch its work. So it's a project. There is a start time since the moment of uh, an idea of the new counseling center creation till the moment it's actually opened. Hiring personnel for the counseling center uh, considered an operational activity. It's ongoing because uh, staff will enter, um, staff will resign, you will uh, maybe uh, extend your services and hire new personnel. So it's an operational activity. Uh, setting up helpline in the counseling center is a project. Yes, so there is a time of an idea when it pops up in our mind, and there is a time when the helpline is actually set. Um, and work on a helpline in the center, that counseling center, will be an operational activity, even though uh, every phone call is somehow unique. So still, um, it is it is an operation. There are a similar number of uh, actions which should be taken, and there is no start and ending point for that. So the key, basically, in differentiation um, projects from operational activities is uh, the temporary measure. It's always, up, uh, uh, in many cases, applied to differentiate projects from non-projects. So when you see the start and the end, of uh, like activity dedicated to particular um, to creation of a unique product, then it's a project. While, for example, if you're working on the helpline, even though you knew like the start and the end of the call, so but still all the uh, uh, like calls which are received in the call center are uh, operation. So I hope this somehow clarifies the matter. So I will continue. Um, so why do projects start at all? Uh, in many cases, uh, there is a um, requirement, for example, from customers to create a certain service. So then you, for example, see that Let's say this area lacks of counseling center, but there is a demand in that. So you launch a, uh, launch a um, counseling center, or for example, there is a requirement from government. Um, so there may be a demand uh, in market. So somehow similar to uh, demands from the customers from uh, for the counseling center, there is an opportunity. Uh, for example, you see that maybe if you will launch counseling center here, this will uh, help uh, many citizens, and this will, for example, help you to uh, uh, promote your service, earn money. Um, build your personal image as a professional and so on and so forth. Or for example, project starts due to technology advancements. Let's say um, we have a, a new technology which simplifies uh, different processes and we need to figure out how to launch that technology, how to install that into our everyday activity in order to operate faster and then more effectively. So, and why do projects end? Um, usually, uh, in successful cases, projects end because the objectives are attained, or uh, in some unfortunate cases, uh, the objectives can be attained due to various issues, numerous matters. And unfortunately, in my practice, I work with such projects. Then um, there were numerous obstacles uh, which prevented the, the project from successful ending. And so uh, our team just made a conclusion that it's uh, pointless to proceed um, due to, for example, lack of support uh, from the stakeholders or uh, uh, let's say, a lack of interest or the project was extremely expensive and um, it was not uh, reasonable to go on with it. And uh, for example, sometimes objectives become inaccurate. So for example, again, talking about that counseling center, 
Normally it doesn't happen in this way, uh, but well, let's just imagine in the, uh, you know, just imagine that you're planning to open a counseling center, you come up with the team, you're thinking about uh, how this works, choosing the building, and then you figure out that somebody else has opened a counseling center um, in that particular area. So basically that demand is covered. Um, so that's about the project. And now the question is, uh, what is project management? So uh, again, PM Bach defines project management as the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities um, uh, and to project requirements. So this includes uh, the uh, broad range of skills, knowledge, tools, and techniques, uh, which include integration management, uh, then, for example, you have to uh, consider all the areas, all the paths, all the aspects of the situation and the context you are working on, and applying that in order to succeed with the project. Scope management, which actually refers to, uh, to the main tasks, to the main interests of the project. Time management, to ensure that the project is started and finished on time cost management to ensure that the, um, the project doesn't exceed the budget it has been allocated. Uh, quality management to ensure that all the procedures and the results are up to uh, required quality. Resource management, which includes uh, human resource, for example, to ensure that all people are involved, all people are working well, contributing at their maximum level. Uh, and uh, also uh, other possible resources like, uh, for example, platform, uh, online tools, which you use and so on. Uh, communications management, again, uh, to ensure that you're well understood, that uh, all communications will work well, everybody's aware uh, of what's going on, the communication is transparent, obvious and clear. Uh, risk management. Another area uh, is uh, when you think of the, um, uh, the then you try to prevent um, certain risks uh, from happening, or then you understand that certain risks are there, and you already uh, have an idea of how you will be dealing with them once a risky event is happening or will happen. So another area uh, might be uh, unique for governmental organizations, at least in Russia, is procurement management. Is basically when you uh, 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 then you uh, figure out what you need to purchase in order to uh, uh, continue with the project, in order to maintain the goals of the project. Uh, and uh, let's say public procurement for government organizations and that was to be done properly in order to avoid some fines and uh, negative consequences. And the last one is stakeholders management. So basically uh, to keep in mind and managing well the um, interest, concerns, activities and so on from the key stakeholders. I will be talking about them in a short while. So just to figure out what's going on, uh, I will give you an example. So uh, here is a very famous uh, Russian soup called, traditional Russian soup called borscht. So um, imagine you're having a gathering and you have decided to, uh, um, to cook this borscht for a big group of people. So first of all, uh, so there is an integration management, which actually uh, keeps in mind everything, uh, what you need to do uh, in order to uh, make this borscht cooking and distributing a success so that the borscht is tasty, uh, the people are happy and there is enough uh, amount of it. So the scope management actually tells that um, uh, actually considers whether the borscht is needed. 
for example, uh, whether people really would like to eat borscht. So maybe there are people who uh, who would not uh, who would not like it. So they're bored with it. Uh, or for example, they will be well fed just an hour before that, and they wouldn't enjoy borscht as much. So time management, of course. Uh, you need to figure out when to start cooking a borscht and when is the start for distributing borscht. So because people don't like to wait for food and definitely you need to be there on time um, to ensure that the borscht is uh, fresh and nice. So another aspect is cost management. Uh, how much money do you need in order to uh, cook such huge bowl of borscht? So definitely you may buy lots of cans of pre-cooked borscht and just uh, heat it up, but apparently this will, this will be rather expensive. Uh, quality management. Definitely there are different types of borscht uh, in Russia. So with meat, without meat, with chicken, uh, so and so on and so forth, uh, with beetroot, for example, or something like that. So, uh, but there are certain standards of borscht and um, you want to make sure that once people tasting the meal, they will be happy about that. They would say, mm, this borscht is tasty. So maybe not exactly like my mother cooked it, but the borscht is tasty. Uh, another aspect is resource management. So basically uh, you have to consider again, in order to ensure quality, you have to consider uh, how much uh, products you have, like for example, carrots, potatoes, um, meat, tomatoes, oil, and so on and so forth, all the components, whether it is the right amount. And apparently in order to be there on time with this Porsche, you need more than one cook to do it. So uh, basically whether you have enough people to create uh, this uh, huge bowl of borscht. Then uh, it is um, communication. Uh, firstly, we should consider that all the cooks are communicating really well about what shall, uh, shall they do. And the borscht is actually a complex meal. You have to uh, uh, boil um, meat first to, uh, to prepare bouillon, uh, then you need to chop onions and carrots and fry them. Uh, and then you have to boil potatoes and the bouillon, etc. So there are stages. And uh, you want to make sure that everything is there, ready for a certain stage. That's first thing. And second thing, uh, you want to make sure that, um, well, basically there are people not replicating uh, each other's activities. For example, uh, there are no two people who are chopping carrots while uh, one person has to chop the carrots and other another should chop uh, onion, for example, for, for a steer. And definitely the key point for communication here is to put salt in borscht. So to make sure that everybody is aware that the borscht has already been uh, uh, salted. Because if the, uh, we lack this communication, we have a chance that there will be too much salt in the borscht and that would be a disaster. So um, another thing is risk management. For example, uh, we have a huge number of people here, even in this picture, we can imagine the amount of people who will taste this borscht. The risks are that you will be having a vegetarian uh, in the crowd and maybe a number of vegetarians. Uh, who will uh, who won't enjoy this borscht, and that's a risk. You might not know this crowd before, and you won't uh, have an opportunity uh, to figure out um, whether they're vegetarians or not. So, therefore, you may reconsider cooking borscht and bouillon, or maybe create like two options: uh, water and bouillon for those who are vegetarians and for those who are not. And, for example, to add meat separately for those who are not vegetarians and so on. So uh, here is uh, the risk and the way how to prevent that and reconsider all the operations uh, because uh, if you 
think there is a risk that there will be vegetarians in the crowd. Definitely you need a lesser amount of bouillon, lesser amount of meat, but you need to uh, consider like the amount of water and some additional preparations for vegetarian options. So procurement management, for example, where to buy uh, cheaper yet quality products in such huge amount to ensure that this bowl of borscht is not so expensive. Uh, and another aspect is stakeholder manager. So um, who are stakeholders here for this situation? They are definitely the cooks, they are event organizers, and they are uh, the eaters. Uh, so basically you need to, for example, ensure that um, the eaters are there, they are aware that they will be borscht, that they are ready for that, they are looking forward to that. Um, you have to make sure that the uh, cooks are experienced and they are okay with this type of borscht. You are, um, um, you are in contact with event organizers that they are fine with this borscht and uh, that they are fine at all, that it will be distributed at your event. So uh, basically that's the aspect of project management. So uh, my question to you, um, how do you assess your knowledge of project management? So please go again to menti.com 824007411. Uh, for uh, to answer these questions so that we would know um, who is in the crowd. Okay, everyone can go to menti.com again. 8240-0741. Yes, and I will um, put, I guess, the slide back in a second so that you can see the number. Oops. A two four zero zero seven four one at mimt.com. Okay, so I uh, guess um, we are ready to see the results we are having. So beginners. People who are working hard to develop their skills are majority. I guess that's why they are attending this event. Wow, we have four experienced project managers. That's wonderful. And uh, so far, everybody um, is shy to tell that they are really advanced in project, in knowledge about project management, which is actually good because true professional is always developing and can consider him or herself experienced, uh, but will definitely not tell you that they can do everything in the field of project management um, because it's rather complicated and you never know which project you will work with. And some projects, they may be unpredictably tough and challenging. So, okay, I guess we have an overview of the audience here, so we can proceed. Um, so basically, um, there is a, another alternative uh, to describe project management. So in order to um, manage, uh, in order to attain, uh, the goals of the project that meet expectations. We need to keep in mind cost. Uh, we need to keep in mind time. 
scope, like the main purpose of the project and quality. So, um, so these are this is project management diamond. So the four key issues we have to concentrate on once we are managing the project. And definitely talking about that, I should share with you uh, the golden rule of project management. So which means that the project can be good, fast, and cheap. So there are actually three dimensions, good, fast, and cheap and it's impossible to have all three at one time so there are always two like it's good and cheap fast and cheap fast and good so uh, basically if you want something fast and good well you should be ready that it's really expensive and um, if uh, you want something good and cheap that's also possible but this will take lots of time So now we'll be talking about the stakeholders. I have already mentioned that and provided you with a few examples. So, but uh, in general, uh, there are key stakeholders for each project. Definitely there will be more types depending on the project. But um, normally um, the project manager, customers, so the service, for example, is intended to, uh, it is a performing organization, um, which will basically deliver the service. It is project team members who will be developing the project. And for example, sponsors, those who provide, will be providing finance for this project. Uh, talking about Kurgan, so what was, what was there and who was there? Um, well, definitely project manager, that was me. Uh, customers and here customers were from two sides and they both are presented here in this picture. So for cu customers for these projects were both uh, doctors and uh, patients. So doctors because definitely the increase in patients uh, striving for checkout will increase their workload. Uh, therefore we had to figure out how to um, tune checkup service in order to uh, remain the same workload to the existing doctors so that they wouldn't be overwhelmed with the tasks. And definitely uh, customers were uh, patients because they had to um, receive the service they like and they actually had to go to for a checkup. Uh, performing organization was the uh, health department of Kurgan region. So uh, they had to implement the results of the project in order to ensure the quality of checkup service. Uh, project team members uh, were consisted of um, the uh, intellectual volunteers. So it, it is um, a group of people, around 300 people who are very established, uh, respected people in Russia and they don't mind volunteering their time, expertise, uh, and efforts in order to achieve success. And the sponsor who financed all the initiative was um, an NGO called Russia, uh, the country of opportunities, uh, initiative by Russian government, which actually supported um, um, selection of the these quality volunteers and donated money in order to run this project. So um, project life cycle. Um, actually there are different um, stages for each project and I will rely on PMBOK um, uh, phases of project. So the key is that after each phase, you should have a deliverable, um, a tangible, verifiable work product. So even after you initiate in the project, uh, basically thinking of the project, there should be a deliverable. And most probably this will be a proposal uh, where you will explain what you're planning to do and how much this will cost and so on. 
Uh, then uh, you are moving to planning stage where you have again to have some deliverables. Uh, let's say some budgeting or uh, uh, personal requirements, etc. Then once you prepared, basically planned everything as careful as possible, you move to execution of the project. And uh, here you will have definitely numerous deliverable or uh, deliverables. And for example, for Corgan area, uh, as we implemented service design method, so we actually had to follow the service design path in order to achieve that. So uh, then it is monitoring and controlling uh, that you have to be sure that everything run properly is run properly and then it's closing. So uh, basically, even though in the previous slide it was demonstrated as a uh, stepping process, but in real life, um, these stages are located in particularly this way. So then you're initiating, you already started planning. And while you're planning, you still keep initiating and for example, tuning your proposal. Uh, also you're planning while executing. Yeah, so because um, then you make those steps, executing the project, you already plan how this may uh, walk, walk, uh, walk forward, uh, move forward. Uh, let's say you see certain details, um, which uh, makes you think that these won't go as expected. Therefore, you shift your focus, for example, uh, ask for additional, bu additional budgets. So for example, you have budgets allocated for meals, but you decided to cut off on the meals to, uh, to pay for you know, additional pans and papers, something like that. And so definitely monitoring and controlling starts and then starts at the very beginning and ends with closing because you always have to monitor and control that everything goes fine. So, and while executing, you're already preparing for closing, for example, uh, packing certain um, documents or packing certain proposal, packing certain instruments or prototypes of solutions and so on. So basically, that's roughly how it looks like in real life. So the stages are, even though consequential, they are overlapping. So a little bit more details about each of these stages. So it is initiation, then you have to figure out what is required. So here you have to um, ensure that the scope statement is well defined. So basically, you know what you are doing and for what purpose you indicate all the project stakeholders. So basically all the people you have to involve, uh, you have to, whose opinion you have to consider in order to make a project a success. Because if you're not uh, thinking of that properly, you might overlook certain perspectives and later you will face some obstacles or dissatisfaction. Um, so also, uh, also ensuring the resource availability and actually the need for such service. And at this stage, you may wish to break complex issues into simple items. Yes, so for example, for Kurgan area, the issue of health was rather complicated and definitely we could work on all the domains of health in the region. But instead we decided to concentrate only on preventive checkup service measure. So, um, Basically, there is a saying, how do you eat elephant one bite at a time? So basically, you have to plan what bites you will take. And the deliverable for this uh, stage is a well-formulated, measurable, and refinable scope statement that leads to successful goal or goals description. So basically, you have to pack your proposal. Um, again, so what had happened in Kurgan? So the, the goal was to make less people got severely ill and die, but this goal is too broad. And um, so then there was a question. So because it's citizens' health, what can we do about this? Uh, and in particular, what health department can do about this? Um, definitely, um, it is really impossible to treat illness 
when it is at the very severe stage. So therefore, the question was, how can we prevent illness and death? Yeah, and uh, um, the best way is to go uh, bring um, all people, many people, as many people as possible to check up procedures. But people do not do that. And uh, therefore, the uh, idea was to invite service design, the technology which considers the opinion of users uh, in order to basically create the best quality service. So basically that's the roughly the initiation stage for uh, the project we were implementing in Kurgan region. Next stage is planning. So basically there are, there are uh, uh, peace, proper planning and preparation prevents poor performance. Yeah, there is a saying. So you have to really uh, be attentive to this stage in order to ensure the success of your project. Uh, definitely you need to set the goals. And I'm quite sure you are aware of the SMART goals, like which are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Um, they have to uh, deliverable for the stage would be uh, interim and final goals are defined according to SMART. They are prioritized, apologies for typo, uh, ordered and, uh, again typo for some reason, sorry. Uh, the guidelines are set. So again, example for the Kurgan region. We had a big goal formulated according to SMART. So the big goal, the overall goal of the project was by 2022, 50% of Kurgan region citizens undergo checkup procedures. Uh, and we have developed several goals along this way. So goal number one, uh, again, formulated according to SMART, uh, two weeks to find the best checkup solutions attracting people in Russia and worldwide. So basically to um, accumulate the best experience to uh, not to develop everything from the scratch. Uh, second uh, is to identify within one week by interviewing key stakeholders, population, uh, population's general motivation and fears related to checkup procedures. So basically within one week, we have to identify it and formulate why don't people use checkup service now? And uh, in order to uh, proceed with goal number three, within two weeks to design nine solutions that would trigger people's motivation and beat fears of checkup service. So, uh, and uh, one week, um, goal number four is to test um, the proposed solutions with key stakeholders to check the relevance and required adjustments. So basically, just an example. So there were way more goals than these, but so that you can see how the goals are formulated. Uh, and these four goals here are all the goals of execution stages, but they were planned at the planning stage. So we were able to attain them at timely matter. So um, also it is important uh, at the planning stage to create a pl project plan and schedule uh, plus um, stakeholder involvement. Like you can see here, well, there is no need to read that, especially that it's in Russian. Uh, but you can see that we have here uh, two and a half months basically the time then the project was implemented um, and the different activities and goals stated there. You can clearly see uh, like which goal is supposed to uh, and the time when it's supposed to be attained or activity and the time it's supposed to be um, released. Let's say if you will see the green spots here and here, these are actual times when we were planning to uh, fly to Kurgan uh, region in order to collect data here to uh, attain goal number two. 
and flying here in order to attain uh, goal number four, basically to discuss our solutions. And here in between, we have uh, we had our meetings. So, or for example, talking about involvement of key stakeholders, you may find a um, small red dot here. That was the time when we planned to invite the governor of the region to open up the session. So uh, everybody knew then this was supposed to happen. So roughly this looks like this. We used Excel sheet, but there, there are numerous other ways how you can uh, create that in different apps and in different, uh, using different software, software, but project plan and schedule roughly looks like this. Um, so also there is a reminder for myself as well, my contingency plan, which means that it's somehow risk management as well. Um, so you always need to uh, be aware of that um, something might go wrong. And in this case, you have to have, um, you have, to have a backup plan. Uh, for example, you may see here in our initial plan, uh, we were thinking of staying like uh, five days uh, minus two days of arrival and departure in Kurgan. But uh, due to occupation of um, uh, health department in Kurgan, we had to uh, cut this period up to three days. So we were two days short on implementing. So what we did, for example, we made lots of preparatory work before, even though we planned like two meetings in the week before that, one and two. So we had meetings almost every day to ensure that we will be there on time. So deliverables for this stage is team is complete. So basically, you know who, who are working with you, uh, who is the project team, their resources assigned, assigned, you know, uh, the resources are there, purchased and ready. Uh, you have the complete project management plan, the previous slide I showed before. Uh, and everyone in the team is aware of the goals, tasks, deadlines, and expected results. So also another aspect is that the tracking system is set up and everybody is aware of that. So basically the system which will allow you to trace that the team is active and involved in all the stages. Talking about execution. Um, so even though it's a huge uh, step, but there are a few slides on that. Um, so there is a direction and management of project execution. So complex task, but in one phrase. Uh, tracking system is monitored. Uh, there are status meetings, uh, then basically team comes together uh, to share what they've got, the difficulties they have, uh, they can exchange experience, request for support, uh, um, express their ideas, and so on and so forth. And um, all the updates and modifications to the projects are there. So uh, you can see picture here, it's so the screenshot from Miro, Miro, um, work board, which our team has used. I'm not sure if we will have time to try it, but I, well, we'll see. So basically, um, all the information we gathered, for example, from the participants, uh, from doctors, uh, from citizens on their issues with health checkup service can be found here. So for example, um, a team member, who would like to generate ideas, uh, proposals on increasing the attraction of health service, they can uh, get to this board, uh, they can see uh, like the sticky notes, the replies from the uh, citizens, from the doctors, and actually read the main ideas in order to generate their own ideas. You can see the um, timeline here. So it's not really obvious, but uh, uh, just above these sticky notes, so there are uh, the dates when, for example, certain interview has been collected or uh, the location of uh, this interview and so on. 
So basically, uh, for example, I was ill on this particular day. I never collected any interview. I can get to that day and check what interviews were collected on that day to get myself familiar with that information. And you can see here, there is a roughly new look. And this is actually the stage when our team started generating ideas. So we collected interviews, analyzed them, they are there. And then they proce uh, proceed to generating their ideas. So all ideas are there. You may see a tiny um, um, shapes here, like red color, for example. These are the tags. For example, the person who created this idea uh, put their name on it. So that you would know, firstly, the contribution. You can trace the contribution. You can track the contribution. And um, uh, secondly, you can approach the person who suggested that idea for more clarity. So that's roughly how it looks like. So, um, and the deliverables for this um, stage are actually have been defined at the planning stage. So, and you have to, uh, by the end of the day, you have to come up with a certain conclusion about all those numerous deliverables. They might be achieved, so then you actually complete the task successfully. They can be modified. Then, for example, you think that this deliverable is, um, shouldn't, um, should have a different form or shape than you attain, but modified in the way. It can be postponed. For example, this issue is key, uh, but it's not super topical. Uh, for example, during our project in Kurgan, we figured out that uh, having a car park, huge car park, car park uh, near the uh, hospital would work really well, uh, but it was not as um, a topical issue. Um, therefore, it was postponed for later, or it can be discarded, so basically forgotten, uh, because it's no longer relevant. For example, initially, Kurgan region attracted us to uh, work on checkup services for adults and for kids. But along the way, we figured out that actually a huge amount of kids, roughly 85%, undergone regular checkups and there are no issues there. So therefore, there was no point to concentrate on a uh, younger population. And we concentrated only on adult population. So there are tools uh, for project management. There are Trello, um, Jira, Asana, Miro. Uh, we used Miro. We'll see how it goes with Q&A sessions. So if we have time, we will definitely try it. So uh, next stage is monitoring and controlling. So there are uh, KPIs you should um, uh, measure uh, while performing the project. Um, it is uh, the activity meets the objectives, the efforts of the team members are adequate, the, uh, you're operating within the budget, so there is a cost, and everything is, uh, you are deliver, delivering, basically the team is deliver, delivering, is up to standard, expected standard. Let me provide you with some examples. Uh, for Kurgan area, um, there was an um, issue with costs, so uh, we had to uh, make sure we have enough sticky notes, pens, papers, um, and the software is purchased. So our G drive is is, um, is there. Uh, our uh, Miro board uh, is where our team worked. I demonstrated that before. Is actually uh, purchased and we are able to operate it and so on then flight and accommodation for the team when they were traveling to Kurgan region. Uh, meals that we are not, for example, partying in expensive restaurants. And uh, miscellaneous, which for example, stickers, we use a lot of stickers in service design. There are flip charts, there are markers. 
So basically everything is there and we, um, all those uh, expenditures, they are within the allocated budget. So project manager has to track that as well. Uh, for the efforts for the Kurgan area, so this is a screenshot uh, from Miro board. Uh, as I already pointed that out, so every idea, every issue has to be tagged with a person's name. So um, because our team wasn't as big, it was uh, roughly 15 people, it was uh, relatively easy for me as a project manager to, to trace everybody's contribution and quality contribution because you can definitely pass to rubbish on a sticky note uh, or copy paste somebody else's note and put a tag on this and just your name is there, everything is all right. But as a project manager, I really had to look who is uh, posting their ideas, who is contributing, and whether this is a quality contribution. So uh, objectives. Another objective is very interesting for program area is uh, uh, when we were discovering um, um, the situation, we figured out that there is a staff shortage. Uh, so uh, Basically, uh, if we increase dramatically the number of people going through checkup, uh, there will be a collapse in hospitals also due to coronavirus. So with, with, therefore, we had to um, consider whether to include coping with starch staff shortage into our project. We were not planning to. So, but when we figured out that it's really important, we were planning to concentrate only on um, customers' experience and the workload of uh, current uh, current employees. So, but because this was a key issue, and without resolving this matter, it was impossible to achieve our goal. We had to include addressing staff shortage into our project as well. So another example is quality. Here, by the way, you can see the, um, the team of our project. So here is the governor of Kurgan region. Uh, so here is a team of service designers and here is the governor's team who participated uh, and actively contributed to this project. Uh, so basically to, to ensure that uh, the results we are attaining at every stage, the satisfying. So therefore, all the results we, which this team was attaining, besides the governor, this team was attaining, were heavily discussed with governor's team. So right here, just to make sure that they are happy about that, they think that's right, that's necessary, that's quality, and that's something they're happy with. So, um, and closing. Uh, the project is ongoing. It's about to be closed in mid-July. So what we will be doing there and what is normally required at the closing stage uh, is scope verification. So basically we achieved everything we wanted to achieve. Uh, so if there were some documents, essential, doc essential documents like recommendations, papers and so on, they are uh, transferred to the uh, requesting party, for example, Department of Health, and the documents are clear for them. Um, then there is a contract closure. So for, uh, then, for example, all the final papers are signed, and then the project is closed. Um, there is a um, um, broad project management methodology. So far, I was uh, structuring my presentation on PM book methodology, but actually there are way more uh, methods used. Um, so uh, I was planning to demonstrate your short video, but I'm not sure if you have time. We will uh, we will uh, watch uh, depending on the number of the questions you will have. So, but uh, so that you will have general idea. What is project management methodology? It's a system of guided rules and procedures to make the project finished in the most productive way possible. Uh, and there are different types of methodologies. Why is that? 
So basically there are different tasks of projects and there are different project teams. And still these uh, recommendations on which project management methodology, methodology you should use is in development. So for example, you can see here like Agile is uh, or Scrum number one, number three, um, number seven, uh, they are really often used for IT development. While, for example, for our Kurgan project, <clears throat> we used waterfall model. Uh, it is basically when you consequentially uh, closing uh, different stages of the project and it's impossible to proceed to another stage um, before passing the previous stage. For example, it was not possible for us to recommend uh, uh, improvements in checkup service before we knew the, uh, the opinions, peers and desires for the, um, uh, for the customers, so the doctors and the population. So, um, for our project, for a Kurgan project, uh, we used um, project management methodology uh, applied for service design, but somehow if you look closer into that, you will see that it's uh, roughly similar to, um, and it really lays nicely into PM box structure. So uh, it is called QR, based on the first letters of the phases, phase one, is clarification when we figure out the key prerequisites. So basically initiating and planning. So then it is phase two, when we understand and discover. So basically understand the stakeholders, so the doctors uh, and the um, citizens, uh, the government and so on. So basically we've, uh, we collected all points of view and uh, uh, figured out solutions. Then it is a support stage uh, when we were again creating, recreating our solutions, uh, we're testing them, we're trying to um, implement them in a testing way just to figure out whether it worked, the solution works or not. And phase four when we basically reinforce and deliver, so then the solutions have been uh, implemented. So that's, whoa, big picture. No need to look carefully into that. So just so that to demonstrate you the main idea of uh, service design methodology, um, so that it is rather complicated. Therefore, there are courses dedicated to service design, but actually the, the key for methodology is that it's not like you're doing what you really want. Uh, each methodology has a um, certain number of recommendations, what you should do at a particular stage and what result you should get at a particular stage. And that's why it is methodology. So definitely in order to be skilled in Agile, Kanban, Scrum, Waterfall, etc., you have to uh, study those methodologies so that, um, and practice them so that then you're releasing the project according to that methodology. So the flow of work goes more or less naturally so that you, well, definitely at first you might refer to the book to check what you should do now, but later on you will definitely need to know that at this stage that's what I'm doing and that's what my team is doing and that's how I'm managing that and that's what they should deliver. So there is a new reality of project management and I'm quite sure you've heard of Booker World. So uh, which is an acronym stands for volatility. So which means that there are lots of changes constantly along the way uncertainty uh, when we are not really clear about what's going on right here, right now, not in the future. Um, so there is a complexity, um, which means that the issue the project is working with is really complex and it's really, um, well, consists of diverse issues and ambiguity. So then you are not 
really clear about all the details. They may pop up at different times of the project, for example, certain risks. Even though you prepared really well, the chances are that something might go wrong or there are certain risks you would not be able to predict. Yeah. So, uh, for example, many of people who were releasing different projects in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, were not able to predict coronavirus and its consequences. And that's the element of WUPU world. So uh, there were, of course, elements of VUCA in Kurgan uh, project. So how did it work? At first, we were given a very clear goal. We need to properly advertise checkups. So basically to make uh, uh, this service attractive to the participants, uh, to, to the citizens. But as we were developing this project, we, we figured out that we need to make checkup process more comfortable and attractive. So because many customers told us that checkups were somehow uh, discomforting for them. And we had to tune uh, or remove those discomforting items. But then along the project, we discovered um, that the processes in the hospital are greatly interrupted by various factors. And basically it's not really important. Well, it's important to advertise checkups, but if lots of people will get into the hospital after this advertisement, they will um, get into troubled situation because some, pro uh, some processes do not uh, work as well as they could. Uh, so another item, when we were developing our research, we figured out, I already mentioned that, staff shortage. So I, we added our task with the need to find the ways to attract personnel. And uh, uh, at the uh, later, when we were discovering the situation, we were moving in our project, we figured out that actually one of the key points which stopped people from going through, uh, to check up was the need, um, uh, was a lack of awareness about health. And therefore, um, we need to raise health awareness and health promotion activities, not check up promotion activities. But first, we need to uh, promote um, health activities and attract attention to health. And then we have to advertise checkups because uh, otherwise it would be a waste of money. Because if you see advertisement which is irrelevant to your needs, you do not respond to that advertisement. So that's what we faced. And uh, what we also learned along the project is that uh, even though people are aware of, um, of their health, they really want to go through checkup, everything is clear and smooth, there is an issue. Uh, and we needed to change attitudes and work style of medical personnel and affiliated agencies because there were issues with that as well. So basically starting from a very clear goal to uh, properly adver advertise checkups, we, uh, we figured out that there are numerous other factors, uh, issues which have to be resolved along the way. And because we were, um, because we promised to deliver, to basically attain the goal, uh, more people are going to checkups. We had to resolve other issues in order to attain this goal. So, and definitely considering the complexity of uh, certain projects, uh, work of old and the number of knowledge which uh, uh, project management manager should have, uh, should have there are skills required for project manager. So roughly they are, well, they are classified in the following way. So definitely excellent planning, that is what required. Risk uh, management, that is what required. So you have always, always when you plan something, you should ask yourself a question, what if this doesn't work? What if this goes wrong? And uh, uh, the better you are at it, the better you are in project management. 
So another uh, skill is control, basically controlling, uh, but not, it's not, it's called micromanagement, not like controlling every single detail, but control uh, overall process that everything runs smoothly. Definitely it's teamwork because you have to always encourage, motivate uh, the team members, stimulate them to do their job, uh, address properly situations, then they do not deliver, etc. So cost management uh, also uh, shall be there. So a good project manage manager should be skilled in finance. It doesn't mean like advanced degree in economics, but just the basic understanding of budgeting um, and budget calculation would be all right. Uh, so communication, we psychologists should be really good at that. Uh, and therefore, lots of psychologists around the world developing into project management. Uh, so, for example, myself, I started as a counselor many years ago, like, like how many, like 17, 18 years ago as a counselor. But now I'm a project manager because there is definitely a demand for this profession. And uh, also there is a problem solving. So definitely you have to... Um, know the ways how to solve problems. Maybe there is no need and no possibility to know the solutions, but it's the way how you handle uh, problems. Um, maybe it's stress management, own stress management, team stress management, and how your mind works uh, when you address a certain problem. And definitely a project manager should be able to set the goals and to uh, check that the goals uh, meet the criteria. So first uh, project manager should have that focus uh, on the problem or on the issue. Okay, I guess I'm done with the main part of my presentation. There are lots of things remained. We'll see uh, how many questions you will have. But I suggest that now we are moving to Q&A session. Rati. OK. OK, thank you so much, Dr. Anna, for the interesting talk. I assume everyone agree with this. And I personally find it useful about project management because actually it is very practical, right? OK. Uh, now we are having the Q&A session. Uh, is there any questions from participants? Maybe you can drop your questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. And if you are joining us in YouTube, you can also drop the question. You can write it on the YouTube chat box so I can read it here. Okay, I think there's a question from Rafika. Do you want me to read it or do you want to unmute yourself, Rafika? Okay, maybe I will read it first. Thank you for the insightful presentation. I have several questions for Ms. Anna. What are the mistakes to avoid when it comes to project management based on your experience? Also, what's the best advice you can give to someone who starting out as a project manager for a complex project for the first time? Thank you. Wow, <laughs> thanks so much. It's a very, uh, very complex question. So what mistakes? Uh, well, I guess the, uh, the first mistake um, is uh, to think that um, something which you created during the planning stage um, is something stable. So basically, um, many project managers fail because uh, then they have a certain, I don't know, manual uh, for project, they're carefully prepared, and then they start executing the project. They check what's going on along the document they are working with, and they got extremely confused, like, no, that's not along the plan. That's not according to the plan and uh, I won't do that. Or for example, I don't know how to handle that. Um, 
So basically, um, is uh, to be ready that plan is a plan; it's not a reality, and uh, there is there should be a great degree of flexibility. Second thing, I guess, the second mistake is to uh, think that um, project manager knows everything about his or her team. Uh, so basically, uh, the, the more stressful the project is, uh, the, um, the more complicated the personalities become. So I was in the project where at first everybody was like super nice were super nice to each other and it was like dream team and wonderful but once the project started and it was complicated uh, people demonstrated like themselves from different sides they were procrastinating they were hysteric uh, they were do delivering low quality work, work even though before they uh, delivered high quality so basically uh, it's good for project manager to be ready for that and related to that is uh, to have a, like a backup, backup personnel, um, like people who can handle certain tasks uh, instead of somebody else, etc. So, and that's related to the first item is uh, third suggestion of third mistake, I would say, is not to have plan B, C, and D. So if you have only one plan and stick to that, um, so the chances are you will fail. So every time, again, every time you start something, ask yourself, be the devil's advocate. What if this wouldn't work? What if we will not get, get this information? What if this person will get sick? What if uh, these participants won't respond? And so on and so forth. So, yeah, basically, well, I guess this also goes as suggestions for a complex project. So uh, develop your flexibility. And I guess the uh, last suggestion, if you start something, if you start as a project management manager, so just don't expect from yourself that you will be like ideal, superb, like everything will go smoothly and you will be like um, super project management. You will. But I will say that even after delivering numerous projects in my life, uh, there are still some mistakes I do. Uh, there are still some, some issues I don't know how to handle and they still have to seek advice and then I approach other project managers. They also don't know how to resolve that. So basically, um, approach project management work as uh, with interest, as a field of experiments, Try your best, but not be too hard on yourself. Mistakes are obvious. Uh, it is fine. That's how you learn. And uh, so basically treat that equally. Uh, be flexible. I guess that's it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Um, Maybe we are moving to the next question from Melania. How to make the other stakeholder easily deal with us about a program? Oh, well, it is really, um, well, again, it's another complex question. And um, well, I guess every project manager will have uh, his or her own answer to this. But basically, um, well, try to develop personal contact. Uh, with, uh, with everyone. So what we learned with Corgan project, for example, is uh, we started with the uh, medical personnel and with the health department in Zoom. And that was not as if we started uh, in person because once we uh, met them in Corgan, we started working with them, we started talking with them, we started having meals with them. Um, well, all the communication went really well. So, for example, my other colleagues who were involved in <clears throat> similar projects in other regions, but not related to health, but some other issues, um, they uh, had Zoom meetings like every day in order to know each other, in order to establish personal connection. Um, so... <clears throat> Basically, I guess that's the, the only working suggestion which can 
which can be applied here. But well, I'm not talking about. Sometimes we uh, sometimes we asked uh, the governor. He was involved in a tiny bit, but we asked governor to call vice governor to uh, to basically stimulate the uh, the governmental team to be more active. So you have to find your own ways. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's a question from Shanna Mandari. Dear Miss Anna, thank you for the explanation. Uh, I would like to know if there is limited human resources, is it possible for us to select one of the employee, which is in non-managerial level, to be a project manager? And how about the risk level and how to manage the risk by choosing a non-managerial employee to be a project manager? Well, uh, it really depends, um, in my experience, it really depends on the, um, on the level of the task. Definitely, if you are short on personnel and, uh, well, there is a super complex and super um, uh, well, challenging and a super important project, you should definitely not allow a particular person without project management experience or and education to step in as a um, uh, project manager. So there are actually several levels. There can be a head project manager uh, who can be a supervisor and just be there um, a, a little bit, just overlooking that everything works fine. Uh, then there is uh, just project manager and then there may be an assistant project manager. So let's say if you are short on personnel um, and the project is really super challenging, I would strongly suggest to uh, maybe outsource to find a quality project manager and to make that person an assistant, the one in the organization who will know the entire context and will really contribute and also learn. So this will be really helpful for future projects. So um, basically the, the key point here is that, well, if the project is not as big and complex, uh, let's say a short gathering, a, uh, no, um, a tiny conference, uh, something like that. So you can definitely assign uh, an experienced person to project management and maybe he will be surprised with his or her project management skills. And then gradually you may allow this person to step in into um, more complex projects. And eventually you will raise a qualified experienced project manager within your organization. But the key idea is no experience shouldn't operate as a project manager on a complex project, but can operate under supervision or as an assistant. Okay. 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 Um, this is very useful. And I think it is the best fit yeah, with the, we can um, adjust uh, someone's with their uh, requirement, education requirement, and we can gradually uh, teach her or him uh, to be a project manager. Okay, Mrs. Anna, I think we still have more time. Maybe we can try one of the application that you mentioned before, uh, Miro. Yep, yeah, wonderful. So, um... What we will be doing now, uh, because um, so because it's a very interesting platform and it's really useful for group work for any for project of any kind. Um, what I will do now is um, this. Just give me a second. Uh, 
uh, I, I placed in the chat the um, link to the mirror board. And uh, what I will also do now, oops, I did that, did that privately. I will do that to everyone. Apologies. Okay, so the link is in the chat. Uh, I will share now my screen, waiting for all of you there. Please let me know if it works okay. But meanwhile, I will demonstrate. So that's Mineral Platform. That's how it looks like. So uh, what you can do here is you can definitely type text. So here is a text option. You can add a sticky note. For example, you can put a sticky note here, like anywhere, and you could type something like hello, for example. You can put an idea here or a proposal, or you can insert a link to a certain source. So um, then, for example, you wish uh, to tag yourself. Let's say I put this like uh, tag here. We'll just start from the beginning. I put the uh, mouse here. You see this field here. So this is add tag. So I add tag and I put like Anna. Let's say there are more than one Anna in my team, Anna Labina. Read. And so here you go. Uh, basically, next time uh, I will create a sticky note. Uh, I will be able to add tags. So you may try to do that as well. So um, like it's your playground. So right on the on the right hand side. So you can see that by the way, Miro uh, platform is really huge. It's endless, like Excel sheet. So, but so far it's not as broad because, well, it just has been created. So on your right hand side, uh, left hand side, sorry, you will see this, um, this area where you can choose a sticky note. So just try to create a sticky note and try to create your name on this sticky note. So it should be there in your screen. Yep. I see Michael, great sticky note, wonderful. Yeah. So, Rafika, Audi, yeah. So I write something and try to create a tag. Yeah, we can move it definitely. The sticky notes can be moved. Well, we do not have a particular task here, except trying so we can move it around. Like try to use double clicks to type something. If you uh, accidentally deleted that, you may create a new one. Mm -hmm. Type whatever you like. Mm -hmm. I see the message. Hi. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Yeah, I see that. Awesome. I'm doing really well. Enjoying with um, your activity. So yeah, basically what you can do uh, is, for example, then you um, uh, gather the team and you ask them for some ideas so they can put those ideas in here, like in this raw form. And then, for example, you're sitting with them in Zoom link or on your own or whatever, and you can move sticky notes. For example, all the greetings come together like so all the greetings come together. 
yeah, you can also like all the greetings are related to um, to how are you doing, for example. If you wish to, for example, undo something, you can always put like in the Word document, like the of these, uh, uh, like moving back one step and only your uh, action will be, uh, yeah, okay, you can remove, yeah, up to you. So basically you can do that with sticky notes in the way you like. Uh, what else you, uh, you can do is um, actually uh, you can create uh, charts, mind maps, Kanban, one of the project management tools. So for example, mind map, I put place here. Um, here, so, and I create Something like that. Um, so um, I can move all that. Yeah, so basically that's the tool uh, that where you can do basically everything with your team. Number of participants based on the package you're purchasing is unlimited. So you can have like a team of 100 people, even though it will be extremely difficult to manage. Uh, but well, you can have like sub teams, etc. So there are different templates you can create, etc. So um, um, this requires some practice, but at least you see how it works. Work. Now uh, you may stay here or somebody placed comment. Wonderful. You can also comment there. For example, you like somebody else's idea and there is no point to to add sticky note, I like it, but you can put a comment that you like it. Uh, I will switch off the presentation for a short while. You can still practice in mirror board. Uh, I will demonstrate to you the, um, the uh, mirror board for our program project, uh, always so that you can see how it goes, uh, how it works for a team. In a second, I see that uh, some of you are still practicing. Short, sure, please, you can do that. So, um, basically, um, this is the board. Well, um, it's still downloading, but um, you can see that the board is endless. And on the uh, right down side, you will see the, the board map so that you can see where are you and what's going on. So, um, oops. yeah. So, uh, roughly, you will see that's where the project starts. So, um, here we see, for example, it's in Russian, but I will explain what's going on here. For example, here, uh, the key team members listed their competences, etc. So here was an exercise where we identified key stakeholders. That's what we did in the very first day. Uh, so to make sure that we not uh, we haven't forgotten anyone. So then I divided our big team into uh, teams. Uh, three teams where they had to accumulate the experience around the world. So as you can see already here, uh, there are name tags. So I was able to see who is active, there were uh, some ideas popping up in the form of comments, etc., etc. So another important uh, item is you will see here, it's in Russian, but it's a timeline. I was mentioning that before. So basically, for example, we knew that what is task uh, of the team to gather the best practices. We have time from 4th March till 11 March. So that's uh, which meant that the team would be concentrated on gathering the best practices and nothing else. So as you may guess, on the 12th of not March, we switched to another task. We were preparing to travel to Kurgan. And uh, here we have the materials, for example, the 
templates for questionnaires. Wonderful feature of the Miro board is that it looks like really from far, but you can always um, close with your mouse and see like this what's written here. So you can see mind maps, all the things. So we have like uh, questionnaires, we were composing them, etc. So here is a preparatory stage. And I will demonstrate you this slide. So these are the uh, essences of the interview we gathered. So divided by days. So all our um, all the ideas from the doctors, let's say, we were saying who was uh, responding to our questionnaires. And then you can see that, well, I divided our team again to four groups. And from 12, 20th March, which is um, demonstrated here, till 28th of March, each group had to come up with solutions for each of the four directions and so on. So basically that's how it looked like. Um, um, then on the 7th of April, um, we came up with a presentation for the governor and it is actually uploaded here. So you can upload files here, no problem. For example, that's our presentation for the governor. And we all worked on that simultaneously in different rooms and locations. I'm just uh, getting here. So you see this new field appears. Uh, I'm clicking to the source and uh, the uh, presentation is opened to uh, in Google uh, Docs, Google PPT uh, opens up. So basically uh, that was the end of our project. And then from 27th of April, we started supporting this project and we changed like the different lights of support according to the direction. So that, that's roughly how it looks like online, etc. cetera. So um, um, what else? Um, okay. I guess, yeah, I guess we have like 10 minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting, Mrs. Anna. I used to use Trello actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wonderful. but I... Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be very useful for us uh, about this mirror, yeah. And uh, when I see it, it enable us or multiple designers to collaborate on ideas and collect feedback from a broader cross-functional team, I think. It, it helps us run more efficient design process, I think, about this application mirror. Yeah. Um, yeah, wonderful. So because we also found Miro is the most uh, suitable for our purposes. Okay, thank so you can... for uh, thank you for uh, share with us about Miro. Okay, uh, yeah. I, have, I have a couple of, a couple of questions to the audience now, if you don't oh, okay. mind. Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. So uh, just so there is a summary I would like to share. Uh, and so there are projects that are temporary uh, arrangements to achieve unique goals. Uh, project management is a set of skills and knowledge applied to complete a project in the most efficient way. Uh, project areas and processes are diverse, as you might guess. Uh, there are project life cycle, uh, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring, and control, and closing. Uh, there are different project management methodologies and they are diverse and have to be used for different purposes and ideally you have to be trained to apply them. Uh, there is a new reality of project management. We should always keep, uh, keep in mind the uh, world and be flexible. And there are certain skills required for project management uh, managers and they are diverse and need to be practiced. So uh, uh, I would like to know your key thoughts or conclusions uh, on project management after this lecture, if you don't mind. So please go to menti.com, A2400741, uh, and uh, just express uh, in a few words uh, what are your key thoughts uh, after this lecture. 
So just give me a second. I will switch on this question on the Menti platform. And then I will um, return back the slides so that, so that you can get access to it if you need. Um, so just for a couple of moments, I will be demonstrating this slide and then we will switch to Menti platform uh, in order to um, collect your feedback, like key, key thoughts and conclusions and project management. Yeah, so menti.com, 82-40-07-41. And... Okay, so, um, so the key conclusions, um, deadlines, teamwork, that it's challenging, we need to manage a team, planning till the details, but not possible to predict everything, list the resources, goals be specific, uh, nice teamwork. Um, let me see, planning and organizing, make several plans, that's awesome, that's that what I always do, following the step, that's true. So especially if you're using waterfall model or PMBOK model. Um, project is a unique result. Um, clear mind in problems, direct plans, there are ideas, goal setting, systematic, wonderful. So, organization, structured process. Well, we try to, but the task of project manager is to make it actually as structured as possible. But the more, the more complex the project is, the more difficult uh, or the more effort it is required to make it structured. Uh, backup plans, B to Z, wonderful. Yeah, this always uh, helps me and saves me. Then I'm ready for certain fallbacks or issues. So, okay, please uh, go on with your feedback if you, um, um, if you have something to share that would be really helpful for us and for our colleagues in Erlanga to figure out whether uh, this was important and what were key points for this um, public talk. So, Meanwhile, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and pass the word to Rati for, I guess, closing final comments or questions if there are any. Okay. Thank you so much, Mrs. Anel, for all the thoughts and sharing you have shared to us. And if I can sum up about this session, uh, project management is a way to plan and manage a project to successfully complete its listed goals and deliverables. And it involves identifying and managing risk, careful resource management, um, smart budgeting, and a clear communication across multiple teams and stakeholders. And with the right project management and project manager and the right resources we have, uh, we can set our projects up for success in every time like that. Okay, I think we have come to an end. Um, maybe we can close the station by taking a picture together. Okay. Um, okay, everyone kindly open your camera, please. Okay. Would you mind to open your video? for a while. Maybe I can wait it for about one minute.
because there are uh, nine slides here. Okay, please don't be shy, everybody. Uh, I have Hi, Anna. Greetings yeah. from me. I'm Endang, Surya Room. We'll contact you. Yeah, Bu Endang is our vice dean in Faculty of Psychology, Universitas Erlangga. Okay. Thank you, Bu Endang. Thank you for uh, having your expertise with us, uh, Anna. Wonderful. This is what this was my true pleasure. I always enjoy meeting Indonesian colleagues, even ah, in Zoom. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, you can visit Indonesia again soon. Can't wait. <laughs> okay, everybody, please stand by with your baseball so I can screenshot it. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, one more time. Thank you so much, Dr. Anna, for your insightful lecture. It is very nice to have a discussion with you and looking forward to have more collaborations in the next opportunities. And also thank you to Faculty of Psychology, Universitas Erlangga, for the opportunity so that we can meet here virtually today. And thank you for all of the participants for joining us and also for the excellent questions during the discussion session. And I personally would like to apologize for any inconvenience during this program. I hope you all can get valuable and insightful knowledge from this session. And please stay healthy, stay safe, and looking forward to other opportunities. See ya, and good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. And we, some of us may see you again tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Anna. Stay healthy. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you, all participants here and Barati.